We're finally going to do this series. I know, I've been saying it forever, but it's like Disney Hyperion just did not want me to do it. And then I kept procrastinating things and the holidays came up and just play the intro. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about Magnus from Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. And I will give you guys my formal apology for the very long delay in between videos. But let's talk about Magnus first because I know you guys have been waiting for that for a long time. So, Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. If you haven't read it by now, it's been three months, I believe, since the book came out. Why? Why haven't you read this? Especially if you're a fan of Percy Jackson. Why? Just why? Chase! Annabeth Chase's cousin! Why wouldn't you want to read about Annabeth Chase's Norris cousin? Okay, whatever, but that's your formal spoiler alert. Formal one for the rest of the videos. Okay? Rest of the videos. I'll, I'm not going to give a spoiler alert for my, anything else. But Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. Now, I think everyone's biggest concern, I want to address this right now, is Magnus Chase just Percy Jackson reimagined or with Norris gods or something like that. No, it's not. I dare say it, but I might actually like Magnus Chase better than The Lightning Thief. Don't write the book. No, seriously, I'm serious. Like, it might be because I'm older. It might be because I had to read The Lightning Thief for a school project. That's a different story, though. But I do dare say that this one is a little bit better than Lightning Thief. It is the same concept of introducing this teenager, or, well, for the Lightning Thief preteen, to the world and mythology and finding out he's a demigod and so on. But this one takes it, I think, to a whole new level of, one, weirdness, and two, just a whole new level in general. Now, as for the character himself, right there, our good friend Magnus Chase. I like him. I honestly do. Like from the sneak peek I read, I was kind of like, you do kind of sound like Percy, but as I read into it, I really do like him. He's more gullible, I think is a good word for it, because, you know, right off the bat with Percy, he didn't trust Ares. He knew Cronus was a bad deal, but in this one, this might be also playing off the character of Loki, but Magnus is kind of like on the fence about Loki like maybe he has a point and maybe he does actually want to help it's like he's, he's on the fence and it's it's interesting to see that okay I, I like that especially because Magnus honestly throughout this whole book he feels like the audience yeah that, that's that's how he feels he feels like an audience to this because everything else is going on around them we're learning about the other characters I feel more than him because we do get his past a little bit, like the whole his mom dying, the wolves, going on vacations into the wilderness and so forth, but not too much do you get like an entire backstory about him, like oh when he was this old this happened. It's not really an entire backstory I'd say. You don't understand him completely yet, yet, I say, because there are going to still be, I think, four more books Rick is doing? I think Rick is going for four more books, so, ugh, pushing me to, like, I really, really, really cannot wait for when all these series just cross over all together, but, okay, Rick, four more books? I'm good with four books of this, because I am loving this. I love Magnus in this. I like how he's kind of slowly having to trust others because he was homeless at the start of this book. He he describes how he doesn't trust anyone, which is completely understandable. Like, why, why would you trust anyone, especially when he's being hunted by the police for his mother's murder? Yeah, the thing that the, the mist is annoying. Do the doors have the mist, actually? Or do they call it something differently? I'm not sure. That, though, is... I hit myself with my pencil, but that is another question. Do the Norris... have a 
a mist type. Yeah, I told you we're going to be writing down things as it comes along and as it does we just, I have like a little growing list of them, probably halfway through this you're going to get something about it in there, but for now that's, that's a good question. I think I'll add that to my unanswered questions for it. But all in all, Magnus really does just feel like one of us. He's an audience member watching these events unfold and getting thrown into it. That is really how it's going down. And a lot of the time, the people around him are the ones who are helping him the most. He's got Sam, he's got Blitzen, and he's got Jack. Oh, we're going to talk about Jack next. I'm so excited to talk about Jack, and then we have Hearthstone. Oh, I want to give Hearthstone a hug. There's, see, I want to give people hugs in this, and then oh, X. Okay, we're gonna, there's a lot of characters that we got to talk about, but for now, Magnus, Matt, I like him. He's loyal, which I feel like there's always going to be a loyal character, no matter what series you turn to. There's always that one character who is extra loyal, and he it does seem extra loyal. He does slowly have to develop that, like, friendship and trust of even his floor mates, because it's like they're they're all on the same floor, but they have different rooms. I don't really know how they assign floors to people or anything like that, but I do like that. I like the shock that he went into when he died. Yeah, I, ironically, yes, I do actually like that he died, because it doesn't seem like there's a Norris K. They have like multiple realms that you go to or gods that, like every god oversees some death realm. Doesn't matter what you're the god of or the goddess of, you oversee some death realm for everything. Why? Because Renderock's coming, and I actually do like that he died. Yeah, I know, but it doesn't seem like, like I said, there, it doesn't seem like that there's a camp for the Norris, so I'm gonna mark that one down too. Norris camp. Or do they? Because it, it doesn't seem like anyone knows really about the Norris, it, or if they are Nor a Norris demigod or not. Whether they go to Valhalla or not, although I gotta say that would be hilarious if you accidentally had a Greek soul go to Valhalla. That'd be a really awkward conversation when all of the elders are like, so do you know, are you a demigod? And they're like, yeah, who's your parent? And it's like, yeah, I, I said it, so I gotta say it. And it's like, uh, Ares? It's like, it's like oh, uh... Well, you can't exactly be here. And I'll talk more about that when I get to Sam, because I, I have a whole section that I want to talk about that more applies to Sam than Magnus, but for Magnus, right now, I do like that he actually did die. It throws in a whole new twist that I didn't think could happen. And I, it's funny how it happened, because, you know, it actually, I think Rick Ryder knew exactly what we were thinking, that there was going to be some plot twist or some magical potion, Leo, that can bring him back to life, but nope, nope, Magnus died, nope, he, he died. When Annabeth came in, oh, Annabeth, I love that so much when Annabeth came in, I could not believe that they did that. Rick Riordan, he's crossing everything over slowly but surely, I'm waiting for the render rock type situation that's gonna come up where they're gonna be like, we need to call the Greeks in on this, we gotta get the Romans, we gotta get the magicians, we gotta get any other religion you wanna throw in while you're at it. Maybe Apollo's gonna become a god again, or maybe he's gonna die and then go to Valhalla. That would be a weird twist. I like that idea. <laughs> Sorry, Apollo, I want you to die and go to Valhalla and then regain your godliness. Sorry, Apollo. That that would be that'd be a very interesting plot twist, but I that that would be good. Anyway, back to Magnus. I keep straying away from Magnus because, like I said, he's more of the person who's kind of in the background during all this Norse stuff because he's slowly finding out what it is, like what all this mythology stuff is, what all the nine realms are. He's acting as kind of the audience member, and at times he's acting as our main character. He's literally our window into the world, and some, you know, he does do things. I think it's very interesting the powers he has as the son of Frey. 
because I did not guess Son of Frey. I was actually thinking more along the lines of Loki, but hey, why not? Let's. I didn't even know Frey and Freya were Norris. Frankly, I really didn't. But I do. I do like Magnus. I want to learn more about him. I want to see him play more of that role. But I feel like even with Percy Jackson, even though Percy was the main character in The Lightning Thief, he also more was in the background to the gods and the situation that was going on and all the monsters that were coming and all the information being thrown at you. We have a ton of information about the Norse world being thrown in our faces about it just from the nine realms to how all the different death realms to the different gods to the people out who's who in what realm and how people think and feel about a certain god, what the plan of another god is, so on and so forth, and it is insane. It's like all over the place. You're just finding everything out for the first time, especially with Norris, because I think a lot of people just turn to the Thor movies and don't even think about, like, the actual mythology of the Norris myths. I honestly believe that. I mean, how many of you know that Loki... It, it, had a kid. Like, he, he's, the, he's the mother. Sam's gonna punch me later. But, yeah, there, there's a couple jokes in there about that. Still love it when she's like, I will push you off this mountain. That, I, it, it's funny. It's literally, Loki, if Zeus is the one who had all the kids in Greece, and apparently for the Norris, Loki's the one who had the, all the Norris, because, my god, there's so, he has so many kids. Oh my god, there's so many kids! Most of them are evil! Except for Sam. Sam says. But as far as Magnus goes, like I said, trust issues, definitely, but he's still loyal. That's the interesting thing. If you gain his trust, he stays loyal to you. And as far as that is concerned, I do like his powers. Very interesting, the whole idea of balance. Instead of just having, like, sea powers. He has some fishing powers, he's able to keep a balance of warmth in himself, he can control some fire, it seems like. He kind of has, like, everything, in a way, because there's a lot of powers he can do, and with Jack at his side, that is awesome. I want to see him learn how to sword fight, so that he and Jack can slowly, like, become one, like, you know, Percy and Riptide and I swear if Riptide starts talking, <laughs> we'll talk more about talking swords in the next video though because next up is Jack, but for now to wrap up Magnus, like I said, I want to know more about him, I want to him to see him do more. He did a lot in this book, but I do feel like it was more focused on the entire world rather than just him going through this world. It's him going through the world, learning about it doing all this stuff with all of his friends who have been in this world for a while and once he gets used to the world, which I feel like we're in the next book he'll be more used to the world, then we're gonna start getting into who he is and what kind of character he is. It's like, again, I, I'm gonna compare him to Percy because we are starting from scratch once again with a demigod, except this time the demigod's dead. I, I, I love that idea! I, I love I didn't want it to be true, but then it kind of grew on me as the book kept going. The idea that they can come back as these things I can't pronounce. I can't pronounce any of these Nora stuff. I'm lucky I can pronounce the Greek and Roman stuff. I'm actually lucky I can pronounce most of the Egyptian stuff. I'm lucky I can pronounce the names in this book. Don't even get me started on the weird titles for different jobs. Can't do it. Can't do it. I just... I'm bad at these. I'm gonna try to pronounce like their Elujays or something like that. And I, I can't pronounce them any. I can't pronounce anything. But Magnus, I want to see more of him. I want to see him grow definitely in confidence. I think he's going to become a leader like his cousin. And I'm curious to see if he will call on some Greek help. Because they said that they would do like special missions with Sam for Odin. I'm curious, very curious. Very curious to see if he might call on some Greek help at some point. He he may. They may end up in New York and they may be in trouble and he may be like, come on guys, let's go see my cousin. Oh my god, if they do that, I'm...
fangirls across the- I'm just thinking about it. I'm like trying so hard to hold in my fangirl just thinking about it. But I want that to happen. I want him to grow as a leader. I want to continue to see Magnus Chase grow. For now, like I said, loyalty, some trust issues, pretty good powers. I do like that he's- him and his dad are on like good grounds now. I like that. I really- I really do like that and I like how even Frey mentioned like, yeah, I know if you hate me for not being there, I completely understand. Good job, Frey, for action, for understanding that. Good job. Good job, dude. But, like I said, Banks Chase, want to see him keep continue to grow. Hopefully next time it's going to be less focused on the world around them and more focused on maybe his character. I'm not saying that that is a bad thing that it was focused on the world around them because you need to establish the world before you can establish the character. Otherwise, you don't know what's going on in the world and you're confused at why this character is doing what they're doing because you don't know the world. But now we know the world and now Magnus can continue into this world, maybe even call on his Greek cousin to help out because if he does that I'm going to be so happy. But like I said earlier, Next is going to be his trusty friend, Sword Jack, we will be talking about. And now for the Rick Riordan tweet of the day. We haven't done one of these in so long. Okay, so someone tweeted, I, ha I have to go to school tomorrow. Can you say something that would motivate me? I'm with, I'm with this dude. I have to go to school tomorrow too. I've had to go to school for a while. But Rick said, I guarantee you your teachers are just as grumpy about going back. Wait, I guess that's not very motivational. Well, okay then. Not very motivational, but probably true, let's be honest. It's especially since he used to be an English teacher. I'm sure everyone is, like, still tired from New Year's and Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever holiday you celebrate before New Year's happens. And that is Magnus Chase from Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. And like I said, next up it will be Jack. Jack, the one who dissed the pen sword. You don't diss the pen sword. So thanks for watching. Bye! Okay, everyone. I got now, yeah, so I know I haven't posted a video in like a month now. I am back in school. And even though I did have pretty much all of December off, I was working a lot. And like I said, holidays came up. Then you had all the New Year's Eve stuff, and I just did not get around to recording it, but my New Year's resolution, I'm telling you guys right here on the internet, for this year my goal is to actually stick to a more regular schedule for posting videos and even getting videos up. And also just to tell you guys what's going to be coming up this year, I will be completing this series, and probably sometime within the next two weeks you're going to be getting a cover reaction and a sneak peek reaction. I think I'll do two separate videos for that for the Trials of Apollo that is now my bi the background for my phone. Not, not the lock screen, the background, if you un unlock it, you know. But that is what's going to be coming up in the next two weeks. We're going to be going to Jack, then Sam, we're going to go through all of them. And by February, I want to be on... By February, March, somewhere in there, I want to be going on to The Hunger Games next. And after the Hunger Games, we're going to be coming back to Percy Jackson, and April is going to be Percy Jackson month. More details will be coming to you then, but that whole month I'm going to try to post as many videos as I can about Percy Jackson. I'm going to aim for one a day, but at least multiple videos a week for Percy Jackson month. And we're going to be building up to the Trials of Apollo that comes out on May 3rd. We're going to start on April 3rd and we're going to end on May 3rd. You'll be getting more timelines and I'm reading Throne of Glass right now. No spoilers. No, no, no spoilers. I don't want spoilers for this book because I like how it's all coming together. But I will talk about that when I actually do review the Throne of Glass. It's a really great book so far. I'm about halfway through. So we're going to be reviewing that one, that one as well. And a lot of things coming up. And well, like I said... Sorry, I haven't been posting a lot lately, but I do have a lot of plans for the future, so thank you to you people out there who have subscribed to me. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, because you don't want to miss Percy Jackson Month, right? Really, it's I call it Percy Jackson Month, but it's going to be Percy Jackson, Heroes of Olympus, Kane Chronicles, Magnus Chase, and myths in general, actually. So we're going to be covering everything, so you don't want to miss that, do you? Do you? Do you? You do? No, you don't. Yeah, 
you don't. Come on. Yeah, and if you're going to watch at least one of those videos. But like I said, next week we'll be talking about Jack, and I will try to be posting videos at least once a week, maybe even a little further, closer together as I record them, and I'm going to start recording them more so that I can post them more regularly, and that's my goal, that's my resolutions. Thanks again for sticking with me through this. And I really hope you guys are actually liking what I have planned for the future. So thanks for watching. Bye!